particular good evening to you. I have to say, I've never had anyone in the front row before. <laughs> fantastic. And good evening, and for those of you who don't know me, well, my name is Deborah Peel, and I'm a spatial planner. <laughs> I don't want you getting too excited now. I'm not the dozy, uh, I'm not the Brian Cox type of spatial planner. No, 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 for me, things are far more terrestrial. I'm afraid tonight it's not going to be Major Tom, it's going to be ground control. <laughs> because I'm a land use planner, or what at Dundee we like to call Town and Regional Planning! Woo! Oh, we're not Daisy. <laughs> and it's absolutely fantastic to be here this evening. Well, women in science. It's absolutely marvellous. But I have to say, it's not all the sort of sweetness and light um, sisterhood that you might like to think. I mean, only this afternoon now. I heard a couple of colleagues having a bit of an argument and it went along the lines of, well, of course medicine's the oldest profession. I mean, when God took the rib from Adam, well, she performed an act of surgery. <laughs> I've told you before, earlier in the Old Testament, well, God created light and that was a feat of engineering. <laughs> well, I just left them to it. I mean, clearly, when God created order out of chaos, well, she was planning. <laughs> and anyway, planning's an art and a science. Now, of course, for those of you who, who do, do know me, you're sort of thinking, well, Deborah, what is it you're doing? You said there was absolutely no way you were going to do Bright Club. I mean, you certainly weren't going to do stand-up, especially since you now have a chair. <laughs> but, uh, planning is just really serious, and so there's no point me coming. But then my agent, well, when I say agent, I mean Jonathan Urch from Revealing Research, said to me, Deborah, says, it's not about the seriousness of planning or the seriousness of your plans. It's about you not taking yourself too seriously. So I said, OK, what the duck? <laughs> I'll do Bright Club at Bray's. Now, the problem is, you see, however, that actually there isn't really anything funny about democratically elected members working alongside professionally educated planners making decisions about other people's private property rights. <laughs> I mean, just imagine a family wants to erect a two-story Wendy house in their back garden. I mean, why does that need planning? Well, it does if it's uh, in Edinburgh Newtown and it's an unauthorised direction. <laughs> because unfortunately that is what planning has to deal with, a number of sensitive types of erection. I mean, a typical scenario would be, you know, the mother is driving two children to school in the 4x4 and uh, gets to the school gate, pandemonium, and it's, Tom, Tom, you'll never guess what happens now. It's the planners again. Yeah, uh, they want to put a, a mobile phone mast outside the school gate. Well, of course it's going to frazzle the children's brains. <laughs> Tom, Tom, you're breaking up. <laughs> <laughs> but of course we all want a planning system. I mean, imagine you've just bought your first house, a nice little 1860s terraced property, and you wake up one morning and you open the curtain, and the neighbour... Um, to commemorate the dropping of the bomb on Nagasaki, has put a 25-foot shark through the roof. <laughs> right? And the, the fin and the tail are sticking out over the chimney. Well, it doesn't fit into the street scene at all. <laughs> and uh, what has it done for property prices in the area? So you're straight on to the planners. What are they going to do about it? Well, the planners come round. They take enforcement action. And uh, the neighbour appeals... And then when the inspector comes round, well, he clearly has a sense of humour, uh, he allows the appeal. And in his report, he writes, well, every regulatory system has to have some small place for the dynamic and the downright quirky. <laughs> well, I don't know what that's going to mean for Dundee. I mean, I can just imagine a football wag thinking, oh, we're going to have some fun here. How about we put a 69-foot or willy? <laughs> Sorry about the pronunciation. A 69-foot or willy through the chimney. Oh, that'll help UNESCO City of Design. <laughs> anyway, of course, what they did.
did at Crosby was slightly different, actually. There, they thought that they wanted to do a little bit of regeneration work. And so they contacted the uh, sculptor Anthony Gormley, you know, um, Angel of the North fame. And, uh, well, Gormley, he does things at scale. And this was on the back of uh, Liverpool getting European capital of culture. And so Crosby thought they would ask Anthony Gormley uh, if he would bring another place to the beach in Crosby. Now, another place, for those of you who don't know, uh, comprises a hundred naked men, full, full scale, naked men. And these men are positioned across the beach at various st stages of being submerged in the sand. And as the tide ebbs and flows, all the male form is revealed. <laughs> so certainly dynamic, if not downright quirky. Um, <laughs> and initially, there was an application made for the temporary erection of another place. Now that raised a few sort of public concerns, but actually the planners were happy to grant the application with some conditions. But actually another place was so successful in bringing tourists to the area that the council decided that they would go for a permanent erection. <laughs> <laughs> and another place is there, and I would really encourage you to go and see it, even if it's just to see how nature has, has taken over this, uh, this artwork. And really, you wouldn't believe where the barnacles and winkles go. <laughs> <laughs> now, I have to confess, uh, sorry, I've been a little bit unethical here. I really didn't get my, my, my ethical permission. But tonight has been a little bit of an experiment for me. Uh, because, you see, if I'd said to you, well, if I'd said to myself, actually, if I'd said to you that I would be here tonight at 10 o'clock on a Tuesday evening having a public meeting talking about planning or the next local development plan in Dundee, there's absolutely no way you'd be here. Well, you would be, because there are always a few usual, sort of usual suspects. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, the rest of you, you wouldn't be here. You'd be home, I don't know, changing your light bulbs or barbecuing your ribs. But you wouldn't be here. <laughs> And the Royal Town Planning Institute says about planning that it's about getting the right development in the right place at the right time. But what I'm interested in is making sure that we get the right engagement techniques, that we can get people involved in planning, because we've only got this one planet, we've got to protect it, we've got to look after it. So maybe the Roman poet Horace was right, and hundreds of years ago he said, it's about getting the right amount of foolishness in your serious plans. I've played the fool tonight. I think I know what it means to experience comic relief. <laughs> I'm Deborah Peel. You've been a wonderful audience. Thank you very much.